Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live. It's been about a month, eh? So how is absolutely everybody doing? I hope you guys are having an amazing um, summer. I know I am. It's been uh, it's been a hot one. We've had a heat wave. It's been crazy. I've yeah used to like the hot weather, but now I quite enjoy my air conditioning. But yeah, how is everybody? Welcome to the live. Nice to see all of you guys again. And um, yeah, so if you're um, new to our channel, just joining us, um, yeah, we talk about law of assumption to help people um, create the relationship that they love. Um, I know from experience, I'm engaged, I'm getting married, and I manifested Andrew, my specific person. And guess who came for the live today? Jerry! He's like, hello! He hasn't been around for a while, so he's going to sit and join us here. Um, yeah, so guys, you know what? Um, we always get a lot of emails in about discounts and sales that the coaches are having. So if you haven't already and you are interested in our sales and our new services and products that we do send out, definitely join our mailing list. The link is in um, the description of our YouTube videos. So if you're not interested, don't sign up. We're all good. Hello from Vancouver as well. Um, yeah. And uh, guys, what else? Revenue contest, you know that. Let's get to 100,000 subscribers. Let's share the message. You know, I remember I was in a grocery store not too long ago, and I may have told this story before, but I'll tell it again because it really impacted me. That day I was having like a, you know, just not feeling like my powerful self and, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, when, um, um, when we, um, you know, we, we, uh, you know, when we do these things, you know, there's sometimes there's comments on, you know, the, the social media that may bring me down because I'm like, well, you know, throw myself out there. Then someone says something that's not so nice. And it's like, well, even though I created it, but you know, I'm going through this um, grocery store and all of a sudden I see this old man and he's, checking through my groceries and he should be retired. He looks absolutely miserable. And, and, and he, it was really obvious. He did not want to be there. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, I'm like, wow, you know, Amanda, this is why what you and your team does is so powerful because I know he doesn't know what we know, because if he did, he wouldn't have to be in that situation and be miserable. So in that moment, I sucked myself up and I said, you know what? I'm just going to keep creating, keep sharing. So guys, that's why it's so incredibly important that we share all of the videos with everybody because everybody deserves to be, do, and have whatever they want and everybody can create it. All they need is the knowledge and that's why we get up and do everything that we do. Um, excuse me for just one second. Um, um Yes, I work. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay. So there was some, um, yeah. Let me take a look here. So what do we got for questions today? I didn't have any questions in the Patreon. If you would like to ask me, Amanda, a question, um, you can definitely post it on the Patreon, but nobody posted anything. I think everyone's busy enjoying their summer holidays. So all good. Um, totally get it. So I'll just ask some questions. What's going on in your guys' lives? What do you guys want to talk about? Um, I'm open. Let's talk about the law of assumption. Let's talk about what's going on with you guys. I mean, yeah, let's connect and, um, you know, and answer some questions here out of the chat. So yeah, really exciting. Really, really exciting. So yeah, let me double check the chat here. What do we got? What do we got? I'm doing the YouTube chat. It's easier to scroll through. Um, so, oh, I'm your fave. Thank you. You're my fave, Hannah. You're definitely my fave. Hello. Aw. I just love you. You've changed my life for the better. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I, that's what gets me out of bed doing what I do, right? Is, um, you know, um, is uh, helping people, changing their lives. Hello from Vancouver. Yes, I actually moved. I'm no longer in Vancouver, but I'm only two hours out of Vancouver in the country. I live on a nice little mountain at the bottom with some really nice waterfronts. So I manifested that. I manifested it because there was, everyone was like, where are you going to find waterfront um, in that area? And I found it. Everyone's so surprised. Oh, and I also manifested my necklace. Andrew bought me a necklace. See, me, I manifested that. So yeah. Yeah. So how can I change my self-concept? I want to study, work much harder to be more successful. Okay. So self-concept is basically your self-esteem, right? That's your cons, your, your, what you think about yourself. Okay. So, you know, 
you would start changing the inner conversations that you have with yourself, you know? So things like, you know, everybody, you know, everybody supports me. I'm successful. I'm, you know, this, I'm that, you know, I always create that I'm an excellent problem solver and I'm telling you any problem I have it solved in two seconds, you know, because I'm an excellent problem solver. Um, you can create anything. You can say, I'm confident. I feel confident. I feel good. Um, you know, you're, your, it's your self-esteem. It's what you think of yourself as a person. Okay. So like, for instance, right. If you don't want to screw up in anything in your life, then don't say you're a screw up. Say you look at, I always do things perfectly. Everything always works out in my favor. Favor. I'm always absolutely amazing. You know, I, whenever, whatever I put my mind to, I do it and I'm successful. Um, you know, I always get great grades. Right. But I mean, you know, you, you don't have to study and, and work harder to be successful. You can also intend that, you know, success just comes to you easily and effortlessly. It just flows to you and there's nothing that you need to do to do it. Now, the reason why I say this is, okay, is because we can actually, what we call in neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, called double bind yourself, where you say, I've got to do this to get that. Okay, so now you've binded yourself, but you don't need to do anything to get what you want. Okay, so if you want to be successful, you can say, look, at I'm successful at everything I do just the way I am right now because I'm good enough. Okay. And boom, you're going to be successful. Success comes to me easily and effortlessly. I never have to try. I barely have to study and I always get good grades. Okay. Like you can create your reality however you want. Just don't double bind yourself that you got to do one thing to get something. So like, for instance, you know, I've heard this in the past, you know, with, you know, clients and friends and whoever else, they're like, oh, you know, I want to be in a relationship with him, but I want, I want to lose five pounds first. Okay. Well, now you're putting it as a prerequisite that you have to lose five pounds before you're going to get that relationship. Why put anything in the way of what you want? Because you're going to have to lose that five pounds before you get in that relationship because the universe, your subconscious mind is going to say, your wish is my command. You have to lose five pounds first. So, you know, when we double bind ourselves like that and we make something that we have to do in order to get something, then a lot of times we just end up frustrating ourselves unless it's something that's easy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to make this call and I'm going to get a free oil change. Okay, well, great. Okay, you can make the call. You're going to make the call. You're going to get a free oil change. That's fine, right? So watch what you're putting in front of what like what you're putting in front of you that you need to do to get your actual manifestation. So yeah. So I here's a good one. I have a lot of movement for my specific person. I'm manifesting commitment. He reaches out and makes plans, etc. I found out he kissed a girl um, and a girl. I didn't get triggered. Do I stay in the end or set boundaries in my 3D? So okay. The question is right is, you know, how on says question is, first of all, you set boundaries within you. Okay. And you do that with your self-concept, your self-esteem. Okay. You, you say, okay, look at, you know what, it's setting boundaries in the 3d saying, Jerry, you know what? I want you to clean up after yourself. I never want you to be late. Okay. All we do there is because I'm saying that I want him to clean up after himself. I don't want him to be late or I want him to treat me with respect. That's coming from, I don't think he already does that. So I'm not assuming that he is that person. I'm assuming that he's not that person. That's why I'm having to verbally set these boundaries with him. That's only going to push him away. He's going to be like, bye-bye, you know, because now we're pushing the person away. But we set the boundaries within ourselves, okay? So we set it with our self-concept. And we say, look, at people always respect my time. Jerry always cleans up after himself, right? Um, Jerry's always on time to pick me up because I'm good enough and he respects my time. So you set your boundaries within yourself with the assumption of the other person. Okay. And that plays into your self-concept. Okay. Are you a person where somebody, people always disrespect you or are you a person that people respect? So you set the boundaries with inside yourself. Now, how do you deal with the situation at hand when something has happened and you know, you're, you're, you know, it's, I mean, you don't want your specific person kissing other people. Totally get that. So first of all, we need to change the story about that person, okay? And then also set the boundaries up within yourself going, my specific person will never do anything to hurt me ever or to upset me. Now, on the 3D level, because yeah, we're all human, okay? My question is, is what's your relationship? Do you have a commitment with that person or is it not a full commitment, okay? Because that is something like, for instance, okay, when I was dating this one guy and we were just dating and he was out dating other girls, yeah, I was trying to manifest him and it hurt me and it upset me. But at the same time, I said to myself, I'm like, well, hold on. We don't have a commitment. 
he does not committed to me. He doesn't have to, you know, not date other people. Like it, that's not what the, you know, the rules of our, our, you know, relationship are. That's not our understanding. Okay. So, you know, that may be one way to sort of calm ourselves down when something like that happens, but let's say for instance, okay, let's go to the other extreme. You guys are in a committed relationship and he's cheated on you. Now, what do you do? Well, you ask yourself, okay, because I mean, obviously you created it, right? And it's hard, okay? It's hard. I've created things that I don't like in my relationship. And I've been mad at Andrew and Jerry alike. No, I can't believe it. Grr, 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 you did this to me. You did this to me. But once we let all that anger out, right, and we really stop and reflect and we see that we've created it, the question is, is can you forgive yourself for creating it? OK, like, can you forgive yourself for creating that situation that made you very, very angry? Now, that's a personal choice that you have. Sure. You know what? There's been people out there that have been in relationships, gotten cheated on and forgive the person and moved on and been OK with it. Me, myself, I couldn't do that. I'm not that type of person. That's my, you know, end of the line. Someone cheats on me. I'm out. I'm gone. See you later. OK. And that's me. That's what I choose. So you choose what you're willing to put up with yourself, creating, doing to yourself within relationships with people, because it's all you. It's none them. It's none them. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, um, you know, I, you stay in the end when you stay in the end. OK, you stay in the end of what you currently have. OK, so this is why I like to manifest in steps, guys. OK, and I'm going to explain it really clearly, at least I intend to, OK, <laughs> is when you manifest in steps. OK, like let's say me and Jerry are dating and Jerry's seeing other people. Now, if I was living from the end of being married to him, I would be a lot more angry at him dating other people when I'm not dating other people, even though we don't have a commitment because I'm living from the end that we're married. So I'm not letting myself go out and explore other, you know, possible relationships and dating other people, even though my specific person is. So when you're living from the end, you want to live from the end and your thoughts and your assumptions of him, but not in the end of, okay, that's it. I've cleaned out half my closet for him. I'm going to wear a wedding ring. I'm going to pretend I'm married and I'm not going to date anyone, even though Jerry's out dating. You've got to, you know, basically, respect okay your 3d and live within your 3d okay now i'm not saying you have to go date if your specific person's out dating but if you don't have a commitment you can't hold them to that level of that commitment and then be angry that they're not giving you that commitment because you've got to respect what you've actually got in your 3d reality okay so that's why going in steps okay so the first step would be okay you're dating okay now you want to make it serious you start creating your assumptions and your tensions and you know your inner conversations your visualization your scripting or whatever you know, techniques you want to use around, you know, that next step coming. Okay. So then when, you know, you're manifesting that next step, then, you know, you, you're focused on that. You're clearing up that story. You're going to get a lot faster results and you're going to, you know, avoid basically completely disappointing yourself because if you're living in your mind and physically in the 3d from the standpoint of being married, but your 3d is only giving you, you know, friends with benefits or, you know, dating, then you're going to be, you know, there's not going to be, but there is a chance that, you know, if something happens, then it's going to be a lot more impactful. So you've always got to respect what you've got. Okay. So even when you have a friends with benefits situation, I've been in that many, many times, it's about respecting it. You created it. So don't resist it. Don't be mad at it. Don't have the relationship talk with the person go. I created this. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Now, what am I creating next? And my favorite story for like friends with benefits or um, is basically saying, you know, there were friends with benefits because they want to be in a relationship with me. They're going to start thinking that we're pretty much already in a relationship and they're going to want to be with me and then they're going to move in with me. They're going to this, 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 this. Okay. So does that make sense? Um, no, never set boundaries in your 3D. That's coming from lack. It's coming from I don't think you respect me, Jerry, so I need to say it to you. So if Jerry doesn't respect you and you need to say it to him, then your assumption is he doesn't respect you. And what your assumptions you have is what's going to create in your 3D reality. OK, so if you assumed that Jerry respects you, then Jerry respects you. So that takes me to my next step. OK, how can you assume Jerry's respecting you when he clearly does something that is disrespectful. Okay. So let's use the example of shows up late all the time. Okay. He never, he's never on time. He doesn't respect my time. That's my story. No. So Jerry's late. That's one thing on its own. It's empty and meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. The only reason why this little guy's late is because I say he's late. But then if we give it a meaning and we are meaning making machines and we say, Jerry's always late. 
because he doesn't respect my time. As soon as you give their actions a reason, you're giving it meaning. Okay. And if you give it a meaning that he doesn't respect your time, yeah, I'm going to be upset at him for not respecting my time. And I'm also creating a second story and assumption about Jerry now. Okay. Because it's really just straight up Jerry's late. If I ever meet a Jerry, he's probably going to be late. <laughs> anyway, but you know what I'm saying is everything is empty and meaningless. And we need to step back and stop giving things meaning because nothing means anything. It only has the meaning we give it. Okay. So if we want to give something a meaning, give it a good meaning. Give it a meaning that's in line with your end goal. Okay. That's how you vibrate and resonate. And that's how you, you know, get into the end and live in the end is you give everything that happens in your reality, a meaning that puts you a direct line of that. Okay. So if my goal is to have Jerry show up on time and respect me, then me having Jerry show up late and then giving it the meaning that he doesn't respect me, I'm blocking that end goal. So, okay, Jerry, let's say Jerry shows up late. Okay. It's for me to go, okay, it doesn't mean anything. I remember I was, he was late before and I was talking with my mom about it saying how Jerry's always late <laughs> manifested. That's <laughs> silly me. Oops. Okay. I intend Jerry's always on time. And you know, and it was like, it was a one-time thing. He's usually always on time. Do you get what I'm saying? So whoosh, change the story, right? So just assume my SP is loyal to me and it will reflect. Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys get what you give. What do I mean by that? You get back from your reality, the reflection, the 3D of what you give out there in your thoughts. Okay. So, you know, if you want, if you don't want to be disrespected, don't accuse anyone of disrespecting you. If you don't want to be anyone to be dishonest to you, don't accuse anyone of being dishonest to you or assume they are. Do you get what I'm saying? We get what we give. Um, mm, let's see here. Um, here we go. Oh, Amanda, how do I manifest more contact for my specific person? More him pursuing. Absolutely. First of all, you say, look at, you know, my SP pursues me. Okay. He, um, you know, he's always calling me. Okay. Here's a funny story. When I was, um, dating Andrew and I was trying to, to, to create constant contact, you know what I did? I intended that he would call me for no reason. Right. And just like, I was just going on a rampage of intentions. I'm like, I intend he calls me for no reason. I was driving down the road one day and sure enough, what happened was I got a phone call and I was like, Hey, what's up? What can I help you with? And he was like, um, he said to me, he was like, I, I've just no reason. He was like, I just called. There's no reason. And I was like, okay, no reason. <laughs> so he called me literally for no reason. I was actually in shock. So how do you manifest more contact? Okay. And pursuing them. First of all, what's your story now about them, right? That's the big thing. Okay. What's their, your story now? So you would take down all your complaints. Okay. All your complaints. It's okay to write out your complaints as long as you clean them up after. Okay. Cleaning up, meaning you take them, acknowledge them and change them into your positive intention and start focusing on your new story. So if you've got a history, you're going to want to write down all the complaints you have about them. Don't call me enough. Da 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 da. Okay. Then you're going to change those into positive intentions. And then you're going to add what you want on there more. Okay. So I want to be pursued. I want him to call me constantly. I want him to, um, you know, to whatever pursuing you looks like. I want him to show up unannounced at 4 p.m. in a decent hour. What does pursuing you look like? What are you going to see, hear, and feel when he's pursuing you? This is very important to get to the details, okay? Because I remember one day I said, oh, I want Andrew to chase me. And then sure enough, he chased me up the driveway. And I was like, okay, universe, that is not what I meant. I meant chase me and as in pursue me. And then, but what does it look like? Does that mean he's bringing flowers to your door? He's planning dates for you. Like what does him pursue? doing you look like, you know, um, then the next thing, okay, you want to do with this, um, you know, when it comes to get them to pursue you more is, um, you know, you want to, you know, make sure that you really, really, really thoroughly change that story. And also with yourself to say, look, I'm good enough. I'm good enough to deserve this. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen now. Okay. And, you know, let it flow into you. Don't stand in the way of it. Don't react when it doesn't happen. When you see something that hasn't happened, then you say, this is what I want want to actually happen. Okay. You've got to maintain the story, right? How do I manifest contact from a complete stranger? Well, guys, we do it all the time. We do every time you're out in public and someone says hi to you, you've manifested contact from a person for a perfect stranger. So I guess, you know, it's like, 
do you know this stranger or do you not know this stranger? So let's just say you don't know this stranger. Okay. And actually this is how I manifested Andrew is I was currently um, in this like sort of on and off relationship completely was like, eh, didn't like it. So I sat down one day and I wrote a list. Okay. And I said, okay. And I've also found friends like this. And this is also how I find our coaches. I actually don't advertise. I sit down and I say, okay, this is what the person I want to show up is. And they got all these traits and all these qualities and all this knowledge. Um, so I sat down one day with a piece of paper and pen and I said, okay, this is what I want. I want a lawyer. I want someone who's funny. I want someone who cares about family. I want someone who's normal because a lot of my previous boyfriends were like partying all the time. And I didn't want somebody that was in to partying. I wanted someone more older, mature, you know, that liked watching movies. And I wrote down all the things we would do together. I looked down what wrote down what he would look like, how much money he would make, um, you know, like how he would treat me. I just went into detail. Like I really, you know, sat there and created this person. And then, you know, and I also said, I would know it was him because he would chase me and people would tell me, you know, to, to give him a chance and go on a date with him. And then sure enough, you know what, it was like for eight months, I remember saying to my friend, I was like, oh my goodness. I'm like, there's this lawyer at these networking events and he keeps chasing me. Like he's like literally interested in me. Like he's following me everywhere, you know? And, um, and then she was like, oh, you know, you should give him a try. And then sure enough, you know, one day I messaged Andrew and said, Hey, you know, you want to go for dinner? And he messaged me back two seconds later. He's like, when and where? And then the rest was history. So you can manifest anybody you want. The stranger, when you manifest them, they'll just bubble up out of nowhere. And they'll just, you'll see them in the grocery store. You'll run into, they'll deliver your pizza. Um, you'll meet them through a friend of a friend. So you can either intend the way that you're going to meet them, or you can just leave it open, you know, and, but you would, you can even intend like I did with Andrew, that he was going to chase me. And that's how I would know. And people would tell me. So, you know, you, you put your trust traits out there. And then you say, I'm going to meet this person. I am going to meet someone just like this. They're going to come into my life and they're going to come into my life now. And um, yeah, the universe will just bubble them up for you and then boom, present them to you. And then they will just show up in your reality. Everybody in your reality is a hologram. They're a projection from your subconscious mind. Okay. I know they look real. I know I look real, <laughs> but I'm not, not for you. I'm a projection of your subconscious mind. You guys are a projection of my subconscious mind. This is my quantum bubble and everybody in it is basically a projection of my subconscious mind. Everybody like Elvis said it best, you know, life's a play and everyone must play their part. Yes. And I'm the director. Okay. I'm the writer. Okay. I'm the producer. <laughs> I am the whole thing. Okay. Just like you are in your own quantum bubble. Okay. So yes, no free will. Remember that <laughs> they're all Jerry's. And the reason why I use Jerry, okay, is I'm not trying to, you know, be mean or anything is because he's not real. Okay. Remember nobody's real. They don't have free will. So you know how you manifest a stranger is you say, this is the stranger I'm going to manifest and I'm going to manifest them. I'm going to manifest them now. You don't even have to go into much detail. I mean, what kind of stranger are you looking for? Are you looking for a relationship? You're looking for a friend? I mean, completely up to you what you want to find. But yeah, you just say, um, um, you just go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to find this stranger and, you know, they're going to pop up. Oh, love you too, Jax. You're amazing. Is focusing on the end okay instead of in steps? Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. There is no wrong way to do this. There is no right way to do this. Um, I like focusing in steps because, you know, like, let's put it this way. I mean, me and Andrew have been together, what, seven years now or something crazy like that. Um, and we're still not married. We're getting married next year. Um, so me, myself, like I had so much resistance, you know, with just moving in with him. I had so much resistance with, you know, basically getting engaged. And then I had like a lot of resistance to like, you know, the whole wedding thing, right? It was me. I had to get past my own blocks, you know, and, and just me in general. So I like to do in steps, but if you want to go straight to the end, absolutely. But remember guys, the end always changes. What is the end? The end is a very open term. Okay. So what does the end mean? The end means what, when you start dating, when you move in together with the marriage, but then what happens when you get to the end of marriage, then you have to change your end to your first year anniversary, your second year anniversary. When's the end? The day before you decide to leave this world. And yes, every single one of you guys decides when you're ready to leave because you are in control of even that in your life. Okay. This is your projection, your hologram. This is your time in your little universe. Okay. But, you know, it's a 
you know, what end do you want to live from? It's fine, but always make sure your end is, you know, it's, it's more of not really worried about picking the end as in, you know, living from that end. Okay. So whether you're living from the end of marriage or, you know, a committed relationship, your thoughts are going to look pretty much the same, right? Because if you're not in a relationship, you're going to have to shift your assumptions to, you know, assuming that you are, do you know what I'm saying? So any way you want to do it, any end you want to create, completely up to you, you know. Um, I know people that have, like, gotten married after meeting after two months. I mean, you know, like, it's there's no timeline on this. You choose what you want to actually do and how long you want to, to take doing it. Okay. Cause that's, that, this is your, this is your gig. This is your life. This is your time. This is what you get to do. You are the God of everything. You command everything in your quantum bubble, me, Jerry, you know, everybody. Okay. Everybody, your wish. Okay. The, your, you know, is their command. Right. And, and remember that. Okay. Even when we get things back that we don't like, we've created it. And what we need to do is accept it. And as long as we're okay and we're like, yeah, it's fine. You know, when something happens in my life that I'm not so happy with, I'm like, well, well, at least it's still working. <laughs> like it ain't broken. <laughs> right? So my SP said he's in love with me and wants to work things out after he's back on Monday. He's gone, he's gone away with third party till Monday. I blocked him due to being so devastated. What should I do to get him to call me? Okay, so first of all, I would unblock him. We're reacting, right? Um, you know, it's like when we block people then want them to call us, it's like, well, hold on a second. Like, how are they, you know? I mean, regardless, I've had a client that blocked their specific person and then the person actually went as far as knocking on their door because they were like, oh, I think you blocked me in error, you know? So, okay, so I get it. We're upset. There's a third party who went away. Um, and he wants to work things out. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you guys aren't in a relationship right now. Okay. And then it comes back to what I said about not resisting our current reality. Okay. You've created, okay. That, you know, you guys are broken up and he's out with somebody else. And, but you've also created that he wants to come back and work on it with you. Okay. So you've got to hold on to the parts of that story that make you feel good. Okay. So the parts that make you feel good is he's decided that he doesn't want to be with the third party. He wants to come back with you. In fact, you can start saying right now, he's coming back early because he's done with that third party. He wants to be with me and only me, and he's going to make it up to me and we're going to work this out. Okay. You've got to stand firm in what your end goal is. So I'm going to assume your end goal is that you guys want to get back, that you want to be back to together with him and you want the third party gone. So you start creating that story right now, right now, you know, you can create that he texts you and says, Oh, we're leaving early. But if you've got him blocked, okay. He can't text you. Right. I mean, you know, it, the, it's, it's like, for instance, right. When I wanted to move in with Andrew, Andrew said, you know, that he wasn't ready for a relationship and he didn't want to move in with me. Okay. And in that moment I started crying. Okay. And then I dumped him. I was like, well, then if you don't want this to go anywhere else other than what we're doing now, then I don't want to do this because I want to be in a relationship. I don't want to be just dating people my whole life. But in that moment, I realized I was throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Okay. Because I had created him to not want to be in a relationship. Okay. Because he had baggage. And then yet when he reflected that back to me, okay, he turned, he turned, he reflected that back to me. And then I got angry and said, forget it to you too. Okay. We've got to accept our current reality, no matter what it's showing us, because it's our manifestation. Okay. When we get upset and react to it, we're just resisting it and we're just creating more of it. Okay. So I sat there for a moment and I thought to myself, do I really want Andrew to leave? And I was like, no, now I created him to not want a relationship. Yeah, I did that. Okay. So what do I do now? Okay. I say to him, I said to him, don't worry. You know what? It's fine. I get it. I understand. I don't want to force you to have a relationship with me. I, I like what we're doing. I enjoy your company. And I'm sorry that, you know, I, I had said those things. And then he was like, okay. And we watched a movie and life was great. And for the next like five days, I was just on my mental diet, like a crazy woman. And the funny thing was, is I was actually intending that we would look at condos together and we were, but because I still had that story of, you know, the baggage story and he didn't want to move in with me, he was showing me the condos he wanted to 
Dubai. And he was like, do you think I should live here? And I was like, Ugh. but then what I did, instead of getting upset like that, I started in my mind going, oh, this is going to be my bathroom. This is going to be my closet. I'm going to put my bed there. I started in my mind, you know, playing into this, like it was my story. And then I even, you know, we went to see places where they were 60 or 55 plus. So I'm younger than that. So he would qualify and I couldn't live there. And I thought, no, he's not going to pick this because he wants to live with me. So, you know, and then during that time, so when I basically was like, okay, don't worry about it. I get it. You don't want to live with me. I understand you're not ready. As soon as I said that, you know, and I worked on my intentions, his side of the story was, oh, when you no longer were like upset that I didn't want to live with you, he was like, I was worried you were going to leave because you were okay with it. And you were no longer like, you know, pining over me. Right. So, you know, if we go with like, look at, you know what, I get it. You know what? We had a fight. You ran off with that third party. I get it. Like, and not resist it. Okay. And then take from there and start creating your new story, right? You just need to be okay with it inside of you, right? And when you're okay with it inside of you, then it's fine. You know, if Andrew was to say, I want to leave you, I would be like, that's okay. Go ahead. Right. I can't make, I'm not going to make you stay with me. I'll say I can't make, but we know I can make them stay with me. Then I would go inside of here and I'd start working on it. You get what I'm saying? But Andrew will never leave me. I don't want to manifest that. Andrew will never leave me. I may leave him. I'm kidding. I won't, but you know what I'm saying, guys. Right. And so I intend that helps. I intend that helps. Yeah. Guys, you guys are all amazing. I did answer super chat questions, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I did. What's the next one? Oh, Amanda, can you hypnotize me to lose weight without dieting? A group, uh, a group hypnotherapy session would be nice. Oh my goodness. You know what? I did actually hypnotize. I had to do it for school. I did actually hypnotize um, one of my friends. It was for my, my class project. And um, yeah, it was... Um, absolutely uh, great. So I hypnotized her. And um, then she tried every diet in the world, nothing worked, nothing worked, right. And I hypnotized her. And then all of a sudden, she lost like 100, about 100 pounds. And she was so absolutely happy. Guys, you're hypnotizing yourself constantly. Your guys, everybody's hypnotizing themselves constantly. Our thoughts hypnotize ourselves, right. Um, our state of mind, right, is it, you're in a hypnotic trance. Okay, have you ever, for instance, been driving down the street, and you've been like off in La La Land somewhere in your mind and you miss your turn off. OK, you were in a hypnotic state in that moment. OK, because you were inside here and you had whatever running through there, whether it be good or bad. So we're constantly putting ourselves in trances. So when you say to yourself, look, at you know, I'm amazing. I'm successful. Everything works out for me. You've hypnotized yourself, your subconscious mind to actually create that for you. So. I'm not sure if I would do um, hypnotism again in the future. I mean, if I do, sign up for the MailChimp. I'll post it there, definitely. But you know who does hypno who, hypnosis? Uh, Alexis does. And she's back from maternity leave. She's had a cute little baby. I got the pleasure of going. I haven't met the baby yet, but I did get to meet Alexis and um, her husband, Um back in April before she had the baby. So I'm excited to go back out and see the uh, the second newest member of the Create Your Future team. But yeah, Alexis does hypnotism and she can hypnotize you lose weight. She's great at it. Um, yeah, she's um, you can book her now online as well. So yeah, we're excited to have her back. She's actually booking up really fast. Everybody's like, yay, Alexis is back. And I'm like, I know, right? She's absolutely amazing. So yeah. Have I missed any super chat questions? I'm pretty sure I've got most of them. So yeah, you guys are all okay. We'll do this last one here, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, Gabriel, <laughs> Gabriella, don't throw the baby out, throw the baby out of the bathwater. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, that's it, water's dirty, so is the baby. Bye bye. It's like, bye bye, Jerry. He's like, ah, right? <laughs> don't throw Jerry out with your manifestation, right? Um, how do I remain non-reactive when I feel I'm being ghosted? I don't feel as bad as I did pre-LOA, but there's still something to master. Okay, well, let's, they're not ghosting you, right? Like, for instance, right, you're giving their lack of communication the meaning that they're ghosting you and don't want to talk with you. So how do you shift that? Your thoughts create your emotions, okay? So if I was like, oh, my goodness, you know what? Jerry's ghosting me. He's ignoring me. He doesn't want to talk to me. If I start doing that, okay, what ends up happening is, is I create those emotions with inside me. And when I create those emotions with inside me, then I'm going to start getting upset. But if I was to say, look at Jerry likes to talk to me, he loves me and he's just busy right now. He'll call me as soon as he's free. 
right? Or he always, you know, and then when you start creating that sort of story, you don't feel so upset. So like, for instance, right? Like, what are you making the lack of communication mean? Like your friend, okay? Let's say your best friend, okay? You text your best friend and they don't text you back for a little while. You don't mind. You go about your business. You know, they're going to text you. So you want to talk yourself into a story like that, you know, with, with your person that you feel is ghosting you. Like I said, if you don't want to be ghosted, don't create the assumption that you're being ghosted. Okay. Give their, um, you know, their, 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 um, actions or lack of actions, a different meaning, a meaning that makes you feel good. Do you know what I mean? Um, I get scared to spend money, even though I have it waiting for a large sum, how to live in the end. Okay. Well, <laughs> whenever you spend money, you say every dollar I spend, I make a thousand times back through whatever. Okay. Um, you know, money comes to me easily and effortlessly. You know, the one thing I did, okay. And, and I get what you're saying there. Okay. And I've done a video about this and then it kind of was a little bit controversial, but just because people had a different opinion, but again, okay. How I do things, it doesn't have to be the way that you do things, but I had money anxiety myself. Okay. And even though I had a lot of money, like, you know, and I've always had a lot of money, I would still get worried about spending it. Right. Because I would go and I'd spend money here, spend money there. And I wouldn't budget my money. And I would be like, Oh my God, like, Oh, do I have any money left? Like, do, do I have enough for this? And so I found for me, okay. Budgeting out money, and knowing where each thing is going, each little bit of money is going, and then giving myself some like, you know, blow money, you know, like blow on whatever money, play money, whatever, and 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 putting it all out. I, I knew, you know, when I went to go buy that new shirt at the store and blow my money or, or you know, just buy, you know, candy or just junk, right? I knew that that was allotted for that and I wouldn't get anxious and worried about it. The other thing, right, that I realized was, you know, whenever I would go to spend money when I had a job where I was paid every two weeks, right? Um, you know, I, I, a full-time job, I got paid regularly. I would always like worry it was going to run out of money. But then I started saying to myself, no, money, I get paid every two weeks. Money keeps coming. I always get more money, right? So, you know, it's, it's a shift in when you start to feel scared, you know, you, you tell yourself, no, I can spend money and more money is going to come back to me right now. If you are, okay. Say for instance, when I first started create your future, I didn't have much money. I had to be on a very, very strict budget, but you know what I did, right. Was I lived from the end of having a millionaire mindset, but I lived in the 3d within my budget. OK, because, you know, if you're you can live, you live from the end in your mind, but not in your 3D. You live where you are in your 3D. So I didn't have, you know, money to just blow away. You know what I mean? But I was having the mindset. So how did I have that mindset? So, for instance, I remember I created the website, Create Your Future website. And then all of a sudden, you know, they were like, oh, it's going to be so much money every year. And I was like, oh, that's not in my budget right now. And I said, you know what? No, buy next year when I need to pay for my web hosting, I'm going to have five times the amount of money to pay for it. And then sure enough, you know what? That's what's happened. So whenever you you get a bill, whenever you go to spend money, you in that moment, okay, you stop what you're saying to yourself that's worrying you and you say, no, 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 I can spend as much as I want and I'll get just as much back. And then of course, guys, I suggest a budget because then I know where my money goes and what I have to spend on things, but you don't need to, everyone's different. That worked for me. And, um, you know, and, and it still works for me this day. I mean, of course I have a business, so I've got a budget for the business, whatever, but I, that's me. That's what I like doing. But if you're just like, no, large sums of money, just keep flowing to me. I always win the lottery. I always win at the casino. I can spend whatever I want. And you start to see that come in and you start to get that. And that's up to you. That's so great. There's, like I said, no right or wrong way to do this. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's completely up to you. You make your own rules, right? The only rule that you can't change is your thoughts create. Okay. I know some people are like, Oh, well, I intend only my positive thoughts create. Well, that's the thing. There is no such thing as positive and negative. Okay. In your reality, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. All it knows is what your thoughts are. And as soon as you have a thought, it makes a picture in your subconscious mind. That picture connects, projects. Okay. So, you know, you can't change the law that basically your thoughts create, period. OK, but you can change all the rest of the rules, right? Whether you need a budget or not to manifest a bunch of money or, you know, how things show up to you in your reality, whether you create the how or not, which end you decide to live in. I mean, you get to choose all that. This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be enjoyable. I mean, you're down here to 
be, do, and have anything that you want. And you have the power to do it. You have the power to move mountains. You have the power to make it rain. You have the power to tell Jerry and command Jerry any way that you want him to, that you see fit because you are God. You are God of your reality. And I want each and you guys, each and every one of you guys to remember that, okay? You're powerful. Nothing means anything. Nobody has free will except for you, okay? Well, guys, thank you so much. I um, I do have to, to do some emails today, but I'm really excited about this. Thanks so much for coming on and, and sharing some stuff. You guys are amazing. You guys are all a huge blessing. Um, I love talking Law of Assumption. I think maybe we should do it more often. Um, but yeah, you guys, thank you so incredibly much. I love you all. Everyone here at Create Your Future loves you all. If you guys do need any help and need a cheerleader and some one-on-one -on -one coaching, then definitely check it out. We've also got uh, courses as well. All our courses, they're not really designed to teach anything new. They're more designed to, you know, um, have you focus and create what you want. So like a self-guided study where, you know, you, you've got to, and some, some, it depends on how advanced you are with law of, law of assumption. I mean, some courses may teach you some new things, but I mean, generally it's a time that, you know, you, you, you give to yourself to put your focus on what you want to create. And I mean, of course our courses do teach how to do a mental diet and that sort of thing, right? So I've got a course as well, Create the Relationship You Love. It's for recreating anybody, so it doesn't have to be a specific person. Um, you know, that's my specialty, recreating people. And guys, yeah, thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.